This is a lecture video for the November 13th class. We're going to continue our discussions on hard surface rigging for the game assets. Um, here you see I have the, uh, the, a large piece of machinery I showed you earlier in, uh, at an earlier class. And I wanted to show you two ways to um, rig this wheel to turn it. So there's kind of the difference between hard surface and soft surface modeling where last week I showed you the hard surface where you kind of break your geometry up into different pieces um, and assign a bone to each of those pieces so it's it's really quick to work with um, but you won't get any type of soft surface deformation any type of organic deforming um, and so objects that are really hard surface you know, like a sledgehammer a piece of machinery you know metal wood that's not going to bend you're going to more than likely use this kind of hard surface um, rigging setup and stuff that needs to bend you're going to use a, a type of soft surface rigging that i'm going to show you too so here you see that the, the machinery is one big piece one big piece of geometry um, i'm going to duplicate it out and move him over so that we can see the two different uh, rigging approaches when you're gonna take a piece of geometry and break it apart for animation. So this one I'll, I'll call hard surface and this one um, soft. So the hard surface um, entails breaking apart your geometry into smaller pieces of geometry um, and then assigning a bone to each more than likely. So. Um, for example, this wheel, we're going to want to animate this wheel separate from this, this, um, this larger piece of the, the machinery. You want the wheel to rotate, you want the machinery to stay still. So the hard surface approach is to go into face mode and select this whole wheel geo. Um, it's also helpful under polygons, go select to grow your selection sometimes when, um, um, if it's hard to select everything. So for example, I can I could select a major part of this wheel and go select grow and you see it it'll keep growing the selection and you can keep doing that until you notice over here in faces. I'll do it one more time. You see it's not growing anymore. So I know I kind of selected the major area. And my is sometimes smart enough to know like I, there's no more faces to select because actually this wheel geometry the way that these faces are going they actually go through to here and they don't really connect up to this part of the machinery so it's kind of a separate piece so Maya was able to figure out you know select all this wheel geo and 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 not further select any more faces within this this machinery so then we can go mesh extract and what it did is it took that machine hard <coughs> uh, geometry it turned it into a group and underneath it are all the um, geometry that got taken apart. So we have three pieces of geo. Um, you see it actually took the wheel itself um, and then it took um, the, the spokes of the wheel and the, um, the extension into the machinery. And then the machine itself is its own piece of geometry. So now I can work with the wheel separately. Um, the way that it broke it up is I have this wheel here um, you see that his pivots way off I can go modify center pivot centers pivot up after I broke them off and you see I'm gonna want to rotate them like this um, but you see I also want to rotate um, the spoke thing too I, and his pivot is way off I can go modify center pivot and you see I want him to rotate something like this but again um, they're both rotating in the exact same way. So I could keep them separate pieces of geo and assign them to the same bone and they'll both animate you know, in the same fashion. Um, kind of like this, but they're both separate pieces of geometry. So it, it, in this situation where all I'm really doing with this wheel is it's rotating um, in the same direction, in the same speed, you know, all the characteristics of its animation are going to be the same for this piece of geometry and this one. It's probably easier to, um, in this case, to combine them. All right. 
So now I have the wheel geo all combined. Again, I can center up its pivot. And you see I can rotate it like this. And the machinery is standing still. And now you see I have kind of all these empty transform nodes in here. So I can select both pieces of geo now, the, the main geo, uh, machinery and the, uh, the wheel. And I can delete the history on it to get rid of all that stuff all that history built up so now this would be like the main part and this could be the wheel and they're grouped under the machine hard for hard surface modeling so <clears throat> now we have our geometry set up appropriately and um, now we want to uh, create kind of um, the skeletal system to animate on it so under the animation menu we're going to create the skeleton. Uh, but let me jump into some type of view. The front view here works well, where I can get some initial placement of the joints going. So I'm going to place the root of the machinery here. Uh, I can place the object bone for the entire machinery kind of right in the center of it. And then I'm going to go and create the wheel bone and uh, I'm just gonna create it someplace right in the center here and uh, if I again you can I can click the Q key because I'm still in the joint tool let me press the Q key because I'm done creating my bones Q just jumps out of whatever tool you're in and then um, these bones are pretty well showing but you see if I, I move them inside a bit that they're kind of disappearing so I can click on the um, x-ray joints to see them better because I want the root <clears throat> I want to position the, the root again click the x-ray joint here in this view so to see them I want to move the root so he's more or less in the kind of center of this machine so this will be um, again let's start naming it BN uh, I guess the name of this will be Machine Hard, and then it's the root. Um, I could double click and copy that whole thing, and this will be the joint, I mean the, uh, the object. And then I can double click here, and this will be the wheel. All right, so um, it, it's if you do have many pieces of uh, the geo like this, it's okay to group it. Just um, let's call this SK. It's either you have all the geo like out with, with and not in a group, or it's within a group. It's it's okay. Just it's just naming conventions is what's really important, so that you don't get lost. So again, this is the SK meaning it's a skeletal mesh. It's the main name of the object which is machine hard and then the part of it which is the main part and then we can just copy and paste that and I'll move its bone system up so this machine soft is, is you know we have the the skeletal mesh and the bone system kind of right next to each other and we'll open that back up so we have a group for the skeletal mesh the main part the wheel geo and the bone system root object wheel. So let's start with the root. The root, I'm happy with it. It's kind of sitting at the base. Um, it's in the middle. I can um, check the different views here. In the front view, he's sitting in the middle. In the side view, he's sitting in a nice spot. So that means to me, I can open this up to click on the um, expose joints button. And the object bone looks good. So the only thing we have to consider now is the where the actual wheel bone is placed. So um, just for your argument's sake, I'm going to move him off and offset him a little bit. So he's not sitting like right centered on the wheel. <clears throat> and I'm going to go through the skinning process now. So remember, the root is just for placement within the game world. We don't actually um, use him to skin anything to, and we don't actually animate on the root. So we're going to select the object bone, we're going to select the main part of the machinery, and we're going to, going to go into our skinning, smooth bind, go into the options, and remember, make sure um, for hard surface skinning, 
we always do selected joints um, because we don't want to do the joint hierarchy, which means that it'll kind of, Maya will try and figure out which parts of the geometry, i.e. The, the vertices should be skinned to which joints. Um, but we're actually specifying, we're saying selected joints because we have the, the object joint selected. We're saying skin the entire main geometry to this object bone so that there's no organic uh, bending or anything. It's just there's one object bone, skin the entire machine to it. So when I move it, you see that the machine moves as a whole because it's a piece of metal. There's no bending. You know what? If, if we rotate our, our moving around, you know, it's, it's one big piece of machinery. So again, we can move the root too. And this piece of machinery is not skinned to this root. It's skinned to the object bone. But it's just that the root happens to be the parent of the object. So that's why you can move the root around the game world and place it. And then, the, and then you know, if you want an animation, then it, it happens here on the object bone. So that looks really good. So let's go and select the wheel bone. And we're going to select the wheel geometry. We go skin, bind, skin, smooth bind. I can just click smooth bind now because I know in the options it's the selected joints because um, it, it remembers your previous options you selected. So I'm going to click smooth bind, meaning skin this wheel only to this wheel bone. So if I move the wheel bone, you see that the wheel is, is constrained to it. If I move the object bone, you see now the wheel moves along because he's, because the wheel bone is parented to the object bone. So even though right now I'm technically moving the object bone and I'd be animating on the object bone, the wheel comes along because I built a bone system to accommodate for this parenting. So that the wheel bone, the wheel geo inherits um, move translation rotation animation from the main bone, the object bone, and then he can have his own animation. And again, if I select the root and move it, you know, the entire thing moves, including the wheel, because they're all inheriting through the parent structure. So if I select this wheel bone, now the big thing we want to do is to rotate. <clears throat> but you see, as I rotate, the wheel is coming, the, is not, is rotating along its pivot, which is the bone here. And it's offset from the center of the wheel. So he's actually rotating around this bone, which does not happen to be the center of the wheel. So we're not achieving the animation that we want to get. So that's why I moved the bone offset here from the center to see that it, the bone's placement can be very important. Think of the bone as the object's uh, new pivot point. So this isn't correct. So I'm gonna go to the wheel geometry and go skin, detach, skin, so that I can detach the skin. You see, now I move the, the bone, the wheel's not moving. So I kind of broke the system. But think of the bone as the pivot. So this is the pivot for the wheel. It's centered up on the wheel, it works correctly. If I press the insert key and I moved the pivot of this geometry, you'd see that this piece of geometry is now rotating around the pivot, which is way off base, and it's not achieving the effect we want. But if I go modify, center that pivot up, it's going to center that pivot up along the, um, the average position of X, Y, and Z, which does happen to be in the center area where we had wanted it. Um, sometimes that's not, not always the case based on how the geometry is laid out. But in this case, it goes through all the vertices, finds the position of all those vertices, and then finds the average. And this wheel happens to be symmetrical. So when you center the pivot, it centers it up so that the wheel can rotate along its center of axis, meaning it's just rotating. And, and it, it, there's no like um, getting this offset, this askew rotation where the wheel's flying all over the place. So we have to do the same thing with the bone, with the wheel bone. So right now you can look at the views. We're not getting the best. We can like use the top view here um, and maybe try and center up here. Um, and 
we can either try moving it and personally lining it up or we can hold the V key. Uh, you notice that um, the machine is actually moving as I do this. If this happens, um, even though the machine is not actually, the main part is not actually um, connected to the wheel, this might happen. Um, and if that does happen, just go through and, and detach your skins. It's happening because it's adjusting the, it's, uh, there's a little bug where it might be screwing up the orientation of the object bone. You see, as I move this, the object bone is pointing this way and that's how the machine is pointing. That's a bug they've yet to fix. So, uh, make sure to download your service packs. That might actually be fixed, but let's go skin detach the skin from that main piece of machinery so that he's not connected to that object bone anymore and let's move this wheel bone to the center and then what you might want to do is hold the V key down and try and snap it find a vertex in the center that snaps to and if that's not working then we might not oh, all right he actually snapped in so that's good um, but this is just from the top view. Again, we have to go through all the orthographic views to make sure it's centered up. Now, the one problem is that the side view um, is not hitting the right side. We're actually seeing the side that we're not interested in messing around with. Um, so he might not be too helpful right now. Um, what we can do is select the camera. We could be able to mess with the camera. Um, if you did need to see like the other side, you can either do, um, some type of x-ray view and see if you could see the wheel or if that doesn't work, you could try messing with the camera. You could flip it. Um, let's see if we could do this real quick. All right, then you have to move its position. So um, you just see that this 100 here, we could flip it and maybe rotate it. All right, we didn't need the scaling. So what I did was it was in positive 100 on the X and it was at 90 in the Y, meaning it was, let me select the camera. You see he's on this side here pointing this way. It's much like those area lights have those lines. He's actually pointing in this direction. I can select the camera and he's 100 in the X. I actually want him on the other side, negative 100. And you see he's pointing, he's over here now, but he's pointing the wrong direction. So that's why you could flip him. And now you see he's pointing this way. So I actually can see him now. So this is just helpful for uh, lining up with the wheel a bit better. So I can have, I can look in the side view I can come over here, look in the front view, and try and just get him as centered up as I can. And he seems to be a little off in the side view, but let's take a look. Okay, it's better, yeah. Let me, uh, Get that this camera that you see here that's actually a perspective camera let me get him out of the way here we go now I can see that here's the center point so I was close but not exact so I can hold down the V key and just snap them right to that center point so let's go through our skinning process again the object bone to the let me bring my outliner over the object bone to the main geometry skin, smooth bind it, the wheel bone to the wheel geometry, skin, bind it, and let's see if it worked. All right, so we have the wheel rotating on this bone, and let's see if the object bone, yeah, so everything is set up appropriately um, and is rigged up. And um, we can look into the timeline here. 
Um, let's see, we have 90 frames. Sure, let's see, that's maybe about three seconds or so, but um, I'm quickly going to walk through Seems I have animation on the camera that was left over. Um, so I'm actually going to go, a quick way to just get animation off something is we could say keys, delete keys. Now I don't have animation on that perspective. That's, in, that's good if you're like um, in the animating phase, you don't know what you did with the animation, you just delete it all. All right, so again, to create a loopable animation on this wheel, Frame one, press the S key, and you see that there's a red tick, and all this turned red. Go to the last frame of my animation. In this case, I did 90 frames. Um, you just have to test um, and experiment. Just remember that it's um, you're working in 24 frames per second. So if you want to do three seconds, you do 24 times three. But here, I'm going to set another key here at the end, you can see the red tick. So now we have the same key at the beginning and end to do a rotation. Um, so that it returns to the same position. But in this case, we wanted to do a full rotation, meaning 360 degrees. Um, so sometimes you might, like I could do um, a full rotation here in the center. See, as I spin it around, I'm getting close. I go like negative 360 and s press the S key. If you notice, I pressed the S key while I was in the rotating to put the S in there and didn't set the key. So you got to click off sometimes. And now I can press the S key and you see I have a tick and it's at 360. So if I play this, he actually rotates 360 degrees and then goes back to his original spot. Well, he's rotating negative 360. As I scrub this, you see he's running, turning back to zero. So he's kind of going back and forth, one full rotation, one back, and keeps looping it back and forth. But actually, I wanted him to do one rotation, meaning go from like zero to 360 and just um, continue it. So. Actually, I didn't set this up correctly for this loopable animation. So let me delete that end frame. So here at the beginning, we're at, um, let me see what, if I rotate him along the, the axis that I want to, we see that it's the x-axis, because I want him rotating this way, and then you can stop and see what's going on there. So we're actually working in the x-axis. And if you scrub the timeline, you see that it, it goes back to zero because that's where the, the key was at. So it's a good way to just clear it out and go back when you're testing something. So we're at rotate x of zero. So if I go over to, to the end, if I put in 360, and then, pr and then I, I clicked out of there, I just clicked here, press the S key, and then there's a key here. And if I scrub through, you see that this number's changing to go from 0 to 360. And then it'll just pop to 0 when it flips, when it when we end the um, our animation, it loops to the beginning. We're going from 360 to 0, which isn't really a change. And um, so it should see a loop. So now what we see here is it's looping, um, but we're getting this like slowdown, right? So it's actually going through the entire 360 and starting again. Um, but it's not like in a, a linear proportion. Um, so this might be a good time to show you uh, the graph editor, which is an animation tool. So go to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. And you have to select the object that has animation on it. So for us, it's the bone. It's the wheel bone. And you see we have our translation, rotation, scaling. And so if I click this button here, frame all, it actually frames up. It finds the keys that I created and, um, and frames them up in the whole window. So at the bottom here, we have our time. So frame one to frame 90. And down here in the timeline, you see that we have the keys the same. 
And uh, if you click on stuff like Translate X, we're not actually translating, right? It's it's just staying flat. So you see, it's it, we have a key on it, but it's not actually moving anywhere. And you see all the the translations like that; they're flat out because they're not. There's no motion on them. But if we click on Rotate X, you see that we are getting this animation line, and that's because we're changing the value from frame one to frame ninety. And then we just click Rotate Y, nothing, Z, no change, no change, no change. The only only animation we did was Rotate X. And so you see that we have one value up here. It's frame one, value zero. Click on this one, frame ninety, value three sixty. So it's going as it's going from zero rotation to three sixty rotation, and then just looping over and over again. But since zero and three sixty are actually the same thing, it, you know you don't see that change from three sixty to zero. So it looks like a smooth looped animation. So. I can click play again, and you can see as I'm scrubbing through this timeline, the line that that's, it's going through, these are the values against time. And if I move this out of the way, you see the wheel spinning. So it kind of has this slowdown, but what you see is, is it's flat here and here, and so that's the slowdown that you're seeing. <clears throat> All right, so these are... Um, how Maya interpolates between the keys. So basically I say at frame one, I want the rotate X value to be zero. And at frame 90, I want the rotate X value to be 360, meaning I want a full rotation over 90 frames. And then Maya goes through and figures out what the rotate X value should be at each frame. So here at frame 39, we have some type of value, looks like it's like 140 degrees, right? As I scrub through, you see at frame 67, I have a value of 300 degrees, all right? So what this is doing is it's creating a plateau effect. It's like a slope, an ease in and an ease out. So these are animation terms, easing into your animation and easing out. So you're getting like a slow slope and then, uh, you know, it's increasing and then we're getting our most intense slope change and our values in the middle and then it's kind of easing out. It's plateauing. So um, we haven't really dived into these animation principles yet. This will be later in the class, but this is very handy, easing in and easing out to achieving um, certain animation effects. It's like slowing your animation, easing up into the, the actual speed of the animation and easing out. And it, it it looks good for certain animations and that's the default that Maya does. This kind of sloping. So here are the different tangents. You notice that if I select a point, not only can I move that point, so I'm actually creating the value and the time location here. If I just move it up and down, you know, I'm just I'm changing the the actual value, the rotate x value. If I move it left and right, I'm changing the actual time value. So to speed up an animation, you you move it to the left, and there's, it has to do this whole change in a less amount of time. Or you can move it to the right, meaning slow it down. It has a lot more time to go through. But the other thing to notice is that you have these handles, and that if you move them, it's changing the slope. It's changing the how the value of how we get from this first frame to the next frame it creates a totally different animation. So if I change the slope like this and I click play, let me click the reverse button that goes first frame, click play, you see that we're getting a really different animation here. It's, it's, it's starting really slow. It's almost flatlined. It's flatlined in the beginning, and then it gets really fast. There's a really fast change. So it's stopped, and then it goes from 0 to 360 really fast. So you can get some interesting effects. So obviously, if I, I make this slope really extreme, where it's actually going way past 360 to like 1,500 and then back down, you know, you're going to get some crazy effects. It's actually spinning like three times really fast and then spinning back. So how you affect these, these tangents between your points really will have a huge effect on how your animation plays, creating different, you know, uh, it makes it look completely different.
and what whatever you know effect you're trying to desire. Um, and these these tangents should be familiar to you. They look like the curve tangents from the modeling when we were learning how to model with curves. You know, it's the exact same type of curve. It's these kind of Bezier curves that have these these handles on them that you can adjust. So you can um, manip You see, as I move one handle, the other handle moves. You know, this is the standard Bezier. Um, set up. And you can break them and move these handles separately. I'm not going to get into that right now, but I want to show you these presets up here. If I select both my points, my keys at frame 1 and frame 9, you see they're highlighted because they're yellow. I can select these different presets. Got spline, clamped, which looks the same. Linear, you saw there was a difference. They got changed. Here's our default flat tangents, which le leads for ease in and ease out. Uh, stepped, which means hold this value all the way to the end and then do a, a one frame change. And plateau. Okay, so we are actually want to do a linear. The two big ones to be aware of really um, is a linear which means just do a linear progression from one key to the next. Make a same value change along the way. Have a flat slope line. And then the other one to be aware of is um, the plateau, which creates that nice ease in and ease out. Uh, the rest of these have different uses. Step is in, um, when you have a lot of animation going on and you just want to see where the changes in the animation happen. That's what step is most useful for. Um, and these others have different uses, but I'm only going to show you make use of linear and the plateau. So plateau is more for like organic animation, for character animation, ease in and ease out. You know, things kind of that with momentum, things takes a while to bring up speed and things take a while. Like think of driving a car and you, you have the accelerator down, you know. It takes a while to go from like zero miles per hour up to 15, but then it's really easy to, you know, go from like 20 miles up to 40. Uh, and slowing down, it's the same. You know, it takes, when you go 60 miles an hour and you slam on the brakes, you know, your speed change isn't really apparent until, you know, a little bit of time in, and then um, you can really reduce your speed quickly. So just be aware of, um, actually, flat and plateau look to be the same. So you can use either one. You can use these two. Um, the linear and the flat are the linear and the plateau. But just be aware that the flat or the plateau is more for organic ease in and ease out or more for to show momentum change. And um, linear is just a linear change. So let's select linear and start our animation from the beginning and click play. And you see that this wheel is just keeps rotating. It, the, same, the amount of change is consistent. So it looks like it's just constantly moving, constantly moving. And you can see how this would play in the game engine, just over and over and over again. So I could bake this animation out break out the skeletal mesh and put them together in the Uni engine and this heavy machinery will sit here with this wheel just spinning around. All right, so that's the graph editor. Remember remember flat, the, the linear, and the flat to get the curved or the, the plateau. So linear and flat to get the two different types of the main animation curves. All right, so let's move over to the next piece of machinery. And here <clears throat> is the machine soft. So this is kind of uh, introducing, um, uh, getting involved in the skinning process. Um, I start off with the hard surface because you actually don't really have to skin. You break up your geometry into different pieces and you select this bone to have 100% control over this piece of geometry. You don't actually have to go in there and, and weight the vertices. But in soft, um, in 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 uh, more organic um, animations where you kind of need a soft fall off, you need a bending. 
you're going to have to use this kind of soft surface technique. So that involves, uh, you're not really going to focus on breaking up pieces of the machinery as much. Uh, I'm going to go through and just hide this the hard surface for now so it's easier to deal with just this soft one. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to create the same type of rigging setup. Um, actually what I could do is I could bring, I could duplicate this bone structure. Right now it's hidden. I go display, show, selection. Actually I could just bring them over because um, I, all I did is duplicate them. It didn't copy over this, the uh, all the skinning information or anything. And I can position him, center him up. Using the V key, I just snapped him right to center there. There's our, ob our root, our object, and our wheel. So I didn't have to go through and create the bone structure again. You know, you'll, you'll find little shortcuts like that. Um, but what I will rename is that instead of machine hard, it's machine soft. And I get rid of this one that was created because I duplicated it and he can't have the same name. So I'm just going to go through and replace hard with soft. And now we have a bone structure we can start with. All right, looks good. All right, so I'm going to take the piece of machinery and um, I, I don't want any, you know, I'll just select the root and I'll select the machine. And I'm just going to skin the entire joint hierarchy to the geometry. So I'm going to select the root, select the machine, and go to skin, bind skin, smooth bind. But I'm going to go into the options here and go to select the joint hierarchy meaning take all the bones that are underneath the root here and skin them to this machinery. So it's going to try its best, um, but you're obviously going to have to clean up what Maya did. So I moved the root, obviously moves the, the whole thing because all the joints that are skinned to different parts here are all underneath the root. The object bone, I can move him and you see we're starting to get some interesting um, results here. Um, because a certain amount of vertices are, are weighted a certain percentage to that object bone. And if I move the wheel, we get the same results going. So I'm going to have to go through here and paint to fix this how I want it. So under skin, we have edit smooth skin. We have this paint skin weights tool. I click the options bar to open up. We need the uh, tool settings to work with this tool. So always make sure to click that options bar. Or if you didn't, you can click on the, the tool settings here. And while we have the tool selected, you know, we have the tool settings to work with. So first off, right off the bat, we could select the root here. And... Let me just get the brush tool up. Oh, uh, you know, my fault. You have to, so I had the bone selected um, when I brought up that skinning tool. And actually, you need to have the geometry selected. Whenever you're going to change the skinning after you've, you've, um, you've set up your initial bone skinned using the smooth bind, you have to select the geometry. And then go into skin, edit, smooth skin, and paint skin weights tool, and I'll go into the options for it. All right, here we go. Now we see we have this color change going on here. This is actually the roots effect on the machine. I can click on the object. Here's the object's influence on the machine per vertex, and here's the wheel's influence. So you see it kind of f takes the position of the bone and try and and takes the bones around into account and kind of tries to do an initial skinning. So you see like the wheel is heavily influenced over here where the bone is sitting. The object kind of has a heavily influence in the center, more offset a bit in the, the roots kind of here down toward the bottom and the sides over here. Um, so this is a black and white 
scaling. White is means heavily influenced. Black means not influenced at all. So down here, the root's sitting right by these vertices. These vertices are maybe like 95% influenced by the root. Well, way out here, maybe it's like 2% influenced. So um, a cool thing is you can do this gradient. You can either do black and white, or you can click on use color ramp. And you can see in colors now where blue, meaning cool, it's, there's not much influence. Again, black means nothing. All the way up to the yellows and the reds mean heavy influence, up to the white mean 100% influence. So either way, you can use color ramp or not. Um, I prefer the color ramp usually. So we can select the root. Oop, my fault, I selected the root in the outliner. Don't do that. Select the root over here in the paint skin weights tool. And then we have this painting tool. If you played around with the, um, the soft select, or the sculpt geometry tool. It's going to be very similar. Um, here we have opacity and value, and we have these paint operations, replace, scale, add, smooth. So um, right off way, the root, we know that we don't want the root to have any influence on this object. <clears throat> He's just there for placement. So I can say paint operation replace, meaning replace the values I'm going to paint on. And opacity 100%. You just leave that. Normally, you just leave it 100 until you really understand what you're doing. Value, I want to bring this down to zero. You know, value of 100 means make whatever vertex I paint on, this root will have 100% control over as I move it. Value of zero, meaning this root should have no control. So the other thing to note is on the, the tip of my brush, you'll see a little circle. That's my influence point, which is way too small. So I can hold the B key and open up my painting influence. And you see as where I'm painting, the circle kind of change based on the, um, the angle of the face. So I can just start painting, and you see that everything's kind of turning blue, a little bit of black. So I'm actually painting on this object, saying I don't want this root to have any control over anything. So that's replace. I'm saying whatever vertex that is within this circle I'm painting, replace it with this value, meaning zero, meaning give me a zero control on the root. You can add to, I can increase the value a little bit, like 0.3. You know, as, as I'm painting, you see you're getting like a, a nice fall off. The colors are going up from green to yellow to blue as I keep painting over it. And if you keep painting the same areas, it's adding, you know, so 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and then the highest you can go is, you know, 1, 100%. Um, you can scale it meaning time, so it's going to scale it by 0.3, meaning scale it down by a third. You see he's getting darker. And you can smooth when you're kind of happy and you want a softer fall off. Sometimes as you're working, there's going to be a sharp transition from one vertex to the other, and the smooth kind of averages out whatever's in the circle. And then I want to show you this flood here. So if I do replace value 0, and I flood it, meaning do every vertex the same. Let me shrink this. Flood, meaning go through all the vertices on this piece of geometry and flood it. Give them all the same value. So value zero. I could do value one, and it turns white. You know, the whole root is controlling this whole thing. I don't want that, though. Value zero, flood it. So that's good with a good operation with the root, because I want the root interacting with anything. I can go to the object bone, and actually, yeah, yeah I can paint this. Like, maybe add, you know, oh, I can add more control over these areas with the object. But actually, I want a quick way to say the object bone, replace it with one. Flood this whole thing at one. And again, the root's zero. No, it is black. The object bone is white, meaning he has 100% control over everything. And now the wheel, you see, he's kind of have this, this soft influence over this here, like a light you know, the blues, it might be very small, like a 0 0.2, 0 0.3, but I, I don't want the wheel to influence anything except that wheel geometry. So actually, I'm going to flood it at zero. So I go through, the wheel has no influence, the object has 100% influence, the root has zero influence. And so you might recognize that if I just selected that object bone and clicked the geometry and did a skinning of a selected joint, just the object bone, this is what you'd get. 100% weighting on that object bone, 0% weighting on the root, 0% weighting on the wheel. So you see that why I showed you the, the hard surface technique first. 
because I didn't have to show you the skinning yet. It just does 100% skinning on that bone. And then you go through and um, you can add more bones if you want. But here's the soft skinning approach where I'm actually directly influencing the, the skin weights on each vertex. So right now the root is zero, the object's 100%, the wheel is zero. So I can go into the object bone here and say replace on the wheel here. I want to zero out the wheel. Let me s shrink down my circle holding down the B key and left dragging to the left. You see if I start de-skinning this area, we're getting a strange effect. Um, the vertices that I'm painting out are actually like coming to world space zero. If I, um, if I turn on the grid, you see that these vertices are going to world space zero. So what's happening is that these vertices are not weighted by the root. They're not weighted by the wheel. And I'm removing their weight to the object bone. And they have, so they don't know what to do. So since they have no weight information, they're going to world space zero is like the default. So let me undo that. And if that happens, just undo. Because um, it's not the best thing to do. So first, take your wheel bone. And let's replace it. Value 100%. And we can go through and paint the wheel and the handle. And you just make sure that the way that you have your view angled is you're just painting on the wheel and, and, and no other part. Um, no other part of the machinery. So I can go in here and get the back of the wheel. And actually, this is a very similar process for how to do character rigging, character skinning. You create the bones for the arms, the legs, the chest, the face. And then you go through and you do the skinning, and you have the real soft fall off. And you know you have a bit of understanding of how the, the major muscle groups in the human body work. So it's how to paint it so it looks like you're getting natural, like deforming it based on the muscle groups. So here I just basically painted the whole wheel up, you know, mostly white. There's some red, but red's a heavily influenced, so that's fine. But what I got to do is jump back to the object bone now and do a replace of value zero. And I can go through and paint. And you see now I'm, I'm dropping the influence of the object bone on the wheel geometry. And well, I'm not getting that issue where you saw before where the... Um, where the vertices like all get snapped all the way to the world space zero. So that means that that's good because that means that they have weighting information on the wheel bone so that they're not, we're not getting strange, you know, issues on our vertices. They're actually staying in place because the wheel bone is there and there's weighting information, skinning information from the vertices here to that wheel bone. And I can say remove you know, all influences of the object bone on these vertices and then give all influence to the wheel bone. So you see that I got it mostly white. There is some reds here. And on the object bone, I got it mostly black. There is some like light blue. Um, it's just a way that the color, um, the weighting influence works, um, even though it might be the darkest blue, it actually might still be zero. It, it's just a, a strange quirk within Maya. So you can keep painting, 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 trying to get the whole thing black. But as long as it's mostly black and there's um, just some dark blue but no other colors, then that should be fine. So I can press the Q key to jump out of the paint tool and now I can move my joints around You know, and see, you see that I can, that I'm moving the wheel bone and it's not having an effect anywhere else. So I can rotate it and you see the wheel is rotating. And no other part of the machinery is rotating. So that's good. It means my setup is correct. So again, you can click on the geometry, go skin, edit smooth bind, paint weights. And again, what I did is the root, I flooded out at zero. Replace, zero, flood. Object, I did replace, 100%, flooded the whole thing. 
then I did wheel, replace 0% flood it. So it's just, I have a, a default place to start with because it's easier to flood out the whole thing as black and then just paint the wheel and going through and paint, you have to paint the wheel 100% anyway and you gotta go through and just paint zero on everything else. So that's just a quick way to zero out the wheel bone skinning and then go through and paint 100% on this wheel, go back to the object bone, paint 0% on that wheel. And now basically I have set up where the object bone is 100% influence on the whole mesh, just not the wheel. The wheel bone is 100% influence on the wheel, but nothing else. And obviously, um, let's go display show all. So now we have the two pieces of machinery doing the exact same thing. You know, they have their object bone for placement. They have the uh, they have the root bone for placement. They have the object bone for moving, uh, animating the main part, and then the wheel bone for animating the wheel. Exact same setup, uh, just different skinning ways. So you see, I broke up my machinery in two pieces of geo for the hard way, hard surface way, and I kept one piece of geo for the soft, soft surface way, but I went through and, and adjusted the skinning on the roots. And it has the exact same effect, it's just you saw that there was more work involved in, in doing the soft surface way. So for objects where they're animating like a, like a hard surface object where there's no point in getting this kind of bending or this average weighting between the joints to get this bending, this soft surface fall off. Go with the hard surface way, which is breaking up your geo into the pieces that are gonna be animating separately and then go through and skin them separately to the bones. And again, when you do that in the smooth bind tool, make sure you have jo selected joints, not joint hierarchy. And then it's the reverse for soft skinning. You, you want to select just the root, select the geometry and go, um, bind to joint hierarchy and you'll get that soft fall off and then you'll have to go through into the paint tool under skin edit smooth bind paint skin weights tool and you have to select the bones oh, first select the, the geometry I didn't do that select the geometry edit s smooth skin paint skin weights tool in here you see root nothing object the whole machinery not the wheel the wheel is just highlighted to the, the wheel bone. So those are the two main methods. Again, this is a hard surface one, much easier to set up. You don't have to go into painting. This is the, the soft sur body one. And you have to do that when you want bending. So for characters, maybe not robot characters, but most characters will have the this type of setup and more organic um, objects. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file out with the hard and soft versions of the machinery. I'm going to save it out as press cutter 06 rigging, and I'm going to put this up along with uh, press cutter 05 unity, which means it's, it's unity ready. It, this is just the geometry. So this is like the base version that you can follow along in the video and create the rigging version that I just created. So please, you know, get these, um, get these files from now on, whenever I create videos, I'm going to, create the project files to go along with them um, and then so you can follow along with the video with the lecture and you can pause it and do it yourself which will really reinforce it you, you know you have to do by practice you can only learn this stuff through experience um, so it can be a little overwhelming at first and not understanding of what's going on it's just you have to do stuff and then as your knowledge builds and your experience builds you can start to put pieces together and understand everything and why it's being taught to you. Okay, I'm gonna open up um, Brandon Sims Kitchen. Um, I went through your projects to try and find an object to show you um, that was a little bit, that w might make use of a, a smooth, a, a soft binding, soft surface skinning. So I found this kind of, there's like a, a squeeze bottle, it's like a ketchup bottle, some type of condiments bottle in his kitchen. And I rigged it up so he has his, his root bone, you know, for placement. And then I figure, you know, uh, there's an object bone for moving him around. And then what's cool is uh, I placed this bone here to act like um, if you wanted to squeeze it. Uh, so let me open up the panel here. And if you do scaling on it, this bone is, is skinned. 
so that one second. Maybe I didn't save this out. Okay, I must have, um, I think I deleted the skinning on this so that I can go through and, and do this with you. So let me hide everything else. Basically, I created um, the root just right at the base of this object. Um, I created the object bone, you know, that will, that's right underneath the, the root. It's, it's sitting right at the root, sitting right underneath it that we can animate on it. So maybe the robot would come up and, and it's going to pick up the squeeze bottle and it'll squeeze, you know, some ketchup on its hamburger or something. So this is the geometry. I call it squeeze bottle. But if I broke it out from the scene, um, let me take everything and group it. Let's go through this the correct way and call this uh, Brandon's Kitchen, you know, because it's all static meshes. And let's go in here, and here's my root and squeeze bottle. I can move it out. So I can close out the kitchen, and now I'm left with my SK that I took out. So we should call it SK, my skeletal mesh, SK squeeze bottle. Um, and then, right, the naming convention is to take this, put it in front, and change SK to BN, so it's a bone. Then I got the root. So I can copy that information and put it in front of all my bone names. Okay, so I have the root of the bottle, which is for placement, the object bone, which is for animating, and then I have some more bones here. Um, I have a bone for the, the cap part and a bone for the tip of the cap, and then a, a squeeze bone. And notice that the squeeze bone is not in that kind of main hierarchy. He's kind of, if I close this off, you see that he's a, a sibling of the object bone. He's a child of the root bone, and he's a sibling of the object bone. And I broke that out because, actually, if it goes object and you put the squeeze bottle in here, the, the squeeze bone in here, the, and, you, and I'm going to use him for scaling, um, so it looks like you're actually squeezing the bottle. He actually scales, and he'll push the rest of the bones up. So um, it, it, it makes, like, the whole bottle scale up. And I'm not interested in making the whole bottle scale up. I just want it to look like some, like the main area here is being squeezed. So I actually kind of broke him out of the hierarchy because the influence he was having when you scale, um, he was actually pushing all these bones up. And all, because all the bones underneath him, the cap and the tip, inherit, would inherit from the squeeze, and they would scale up too. So they get really big. So it's not having the attention I want. It's like the whole bottle is scaling up. Um, I, don't, I don't want that. So actually the squeeze joint is sitting outside here. So I'm going to do a basic um, skinning so I can look at this bottle. Um, the other thing I, I did is I added, if you look at this bottle compared to the other bottles, um, I did a few things actually. One, let me turn on wireframe. I added a few more edge loops right in the center point um, because if you scale here, there's no resolution. It's, it's not going to look good. It's very flat. So I want some soft deforming. So I had a few edge loops, and the other thing I noticed was that he had geometry inside the bottle there. Um, if you see, I click it, you see that there's this inside part. So I actually went inside the bottle, found this geometry that's sitting on the inside here, uh, and deleted that um, because it's it was making for more complicated skinning than you needed to. Like when it was, the squeeze was scaling in and out, you actually could see the inside of it coming out because I had a different scaling, um, different information, different skinning information. And I didn't feel like I'm going to go right inside there and skin them up. So that those are the changes I did to the geometry to get this bottle ready. Um, so what I could do is I could select the root and select the bottle geo and actually do a, um, a, a hierarchy skinning on top of this. 
but um, I know 100% that the root will have no influence on this object. So I actually went through and I'll select object, cap, tip, and squeeze. Select the geometry, and I'm going to do a smooth bind, but I'm not going to do a joint hierarchy. I'm going to do selected joints, bind skin. So the only thing it did it is it skinned all these bones, just not the root. So it just left, I could have just selected the whole root and just um, did the skinning and then and then flood out the root with a zero. But, you know, it's it's one little less step I had to do. So I go to select the geo, go paint skin weights. Um, you see that my tool, my settings didn't cut because I didn't click the settings button. So I'll just click the tool settings. And you see that the root isn't even an option here in our list because I, I didn't select him and I said just skin to the selected root uh, the selected bone so it's just I know right away that the roots not being involved in the skinning process so I kind of left it's a it's just a little a little um, improvement instead of doing selecting the whole joint hierarchy so we have the object bone sitting there at the bottom we got the squeeze bone sitting in the middle and you see that his influence is pretty heavy in the middle um, the object bone, you see, is heavily influenced down here. He's heavily influenced in the middle, and then not so much at the top. And then the cap bone, he's kind of influenced up here at the cap, and the tip is influenced up here at the tip. So without even, um, I'm not going to do any skinning yet. Let me see if, turn off wireframe here and see if the scaling worked. Okay, so you see, as I'm, I can expand and and and. Um, increase and decrease the scaling values how the bottle is kind of breathing it looks like it's being squeezed in and out so that's actually pretty good um, I could also select the scale values and middle mouse drag um, that's another way to move values and so this looks pretty good it's it, um, you can see how the scaling has to be very slight so it looks like it, the bottle's being squeezed. You know, you can see if the robot animation combined with this, he's squeezing the bottle. So actually, I'm pretty happy with the way that that that, sk that default skinning happened. Um, let's just see what's going on with the cap. Um, you see how the the tip is going up. Um, again, that's 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 because the the tip bone is actually inheriting the values from the cap bone and that's that's why I took that squeeze bone and took them out because that would happen across the entire bottle and that's not what I want to look so let's see with the tip so it's not bad I, what I was kind of envisioning is as you squeeze the bottle you know the um, the pressure shooting out from the tip here it might be like just very subtle um, as, as some liquids being squirted out but the skinning is off at the the upper area. Let's see what the um, what the cap. You can almost see if it was like the uh, the tip of a fire hose or something if they're redirecting the water. But what I I'm happy with um, the squeeze the way that the squeeze is working down here. I, I don't even think I have to um, mess with it. But you see, it, there's a slight effect up top here. But I'm actually happy with that. The only thing I'm really going to mess around with is a cap in the tip here. So let's go skin, um, edit. You know, I selected the geo, edit smooth bind, paint skin weights. And I already had the tool settings open, so that was cool. So let's take the cap. Um, first off, we can replace zero because everything down here, you know, he shouldn't really have any influence on. So I'm just kind of waiting him off. Um, you see that the, the circle included this area up here, and he already got an effect on it. So yeah, um, I could kind of paint him off there, um, but I'm going to undo that. I think the cap should have influence up top here. Let me just shrink it down a little bit. But what I don't, um, I think the tip here, I'm going to go replace zero on like the whole bottle, because I, I just want the tip to be animating like if it's squeezing out ketchup or something. Um, I'm going to zero it out here and, and I'm going to go with uh, scaling 0.4. So I'm going to scale down. 
the brush with the B key and I'm going to um, get up the top here and I, I think that this area needs to be less influence so I'm just going to go around and keep scaling off down so I'm not sure if it's a zero influence but it's light so that's good you see some of the geos kind of popping back to its original form too but I do want a heavy I can do an add and add this value up here because I want him to have a a heavy influence you know here right on um, right on this little tip area and you can look around you see I um, accidentally painted a little bit over in this area so again I can click remove this to change this to scale hold the B key scale up my brush I just undo what I did. It's constantly painting and looking around, making sure you didn't paint areas you didn't mean to paint. And uh, that's looking pretty good. So what I might do is add, I didn't get these areas. I might just make a smaller brush and kind of paint around here a little bit. Then you can click on the smooth because you see it's kind of a little messy. You can kind of click smooth and it'll go through and, and try and figure out how to smooth out between its neighbors a little bit. And so you can scale up the brush so it has more vertices to read off of to figure out the smoothing information. So all right, let's, um, I just press the Q key to jump out. So let's select the tip again. And I can take the scaling information and you see, you can see if maybe just a slight scaling might work, just even smaller. And then that animation, that's a complementary animation. Let me put the scale back to one. And then to create the animation, um, let's see if it's 48, let's say it's two seconds long. Um, again, I'm put a key at the beginning, press S to put a key at the end. Then maybe right in the middle, around frame 24, I'm going to take the scale and squeeze it in just slightly like that. Press the S key. So it looks like it's being squeezed. And then the tip, the same thing. Key at 1, key at 48, same keys, around 24 can have it look like um, here the scale just have it look like it's alright so it looks like it's being squeezed over and over again uh, that's the loopable animation um, but let's actually do an animation delete the keys Oh, I didn't select anything. So let me select the tip. Let me select the squeeze and go edit, keys, delete. So I can delete all the keys off them. And let's open this up a little bit to maybe uh, 100 frames. And let's actually make it look like um, uh, we could take the object bone and it, you know you could see if you had the robot with them. Maybe we'll have, start at frame one um, and he'll end at frame 100 so maybe he'll pick the bottle up around frame 50 let's say he picks the bottle up you can see um, doing this you see we have some skidding issues actually because uh, the squeeze oh interesting I didn't um, the squeeze is not following along with the object bone so actually I gotta animate um, this might be a good way to I actually didn't rig this to have the um, squeeze, have this move and have the squeeze come along with it. I should have actually uh, put, in a, put in another bone in and put the squeeze under that. But this, um, I can show you something real quick. So let me animate on the object bone. So say if he's getting picked up and moved over and he's going to get turned upside down to um, squeeze out some ketchup, right? And then he gets placed back down. 
so you know obviously this looks a mess it's it's um not following along that because that because the squeeze bone isn't coming along so let me actually show you um constraints um this is actually, um, this was going to be for next week, but I can just show you now. Constraints, you can constrain things to other things, meaning they can inherit their animation or what have you. So I can, uh, the ways these work is you select the master, then the slave. So if I select the object, then the squeeze bone, and I want to do a parent constraint, um, add it, and you see now the whole bottle is coming along. So I had to create this constraint to accommodate the fact that um, I didn't set up my rig entirely correctly for the, how I wanted to animate this bottle. So it is actually interesting because a parent constraint is very similar to parenting objects into a hierarchy. So basically I told the squeeze bone to follow the object bone in both translation and rotation. So it's like the squeeze now is a child of the object. Um, he's just not an actual child in the hierarchy, but he is inheriting now the animation. So now the bottle does look correct. So let's say the bottle comes up and then we're going to squeeze and it comes back down. So that means we need it to hold there for a second. So I can select the object. Also in the outliner, you see here's the parent constraint. It's sitting underneath the squeeze bottle. The squeeze bone. And I can delete it, um, and you see now that we're back to the same issue we were having, where the squeeze is not following along. So I can undo it, bring the constraint back. Everything is looks clean now. So anyway, I can select the object bone, and say he gets there to 50, I want him to hold and to get put back down. So actually, I want this um, to copy this key and maybe come out here to uh, around 70 and I can paste the key and meaning I have the same key at 50 that I do at 70 which mean the values hold so what happens is the bottle comes up it holds there for 20 frames and then the bottle comes back down so if I play it the bottle comes up and it, it holds and then it comes back down so now with the squeeze um, value. I know that um, this bottle's holding from 50 to 70, and so between 50 and 70 is when it gets squeezed. So I can press a key at 50, add a key at 70, because I'm working within here and I want the values after 70 and the values after 50 to stay the same. Uh, but oh, actually, now you see the bottle is actually getting all messed up now. And that's because I'm keying the squeeze, and so he's not actually following along with the parent constraint anymore. So let me undo that, undo the key there, undo the key there. Actually, all I want to do is, is key the scale. You see that the squeeze bottle is being controlled translation rotation, and I set him up that the scaling is going to make it look like the squeeze. So actually, I can right-click, select the scaling, right-click, key selected, not key all, key selected and I'm actually just scaling I'm actually just influencing the scale so I can go to frame 70 again select the scaling key selected and you see that there's keys here but now as I play this the translation and rotation of that squeeze joint is still being controlled by that object joint so everything looks cool uh, and now I have the keys on the, on the scaling, because I want the scaling to stay the same before and after. And then maybe he, um, he squeezes the bottle. And again, I put scaling at 0.5, had the scaling selected, key selected. So now what happens is I can play this. He gets picked up, and he gets squeezed, and he gets put back down. And then I can do the same type of um, thing on the tip here. I can uh, put a key on the scale, put a key on the scale, and then halfway through, you know, I can um, make it look like he's being squeezed. So then I can hide the joints so that we can see this better. 
So you get squeezed and he gets put back down. And he gets put back down. All right. So that ends this lecture series on hard surface rigging, soft surface rigging, and just getting involved a bit more in, in animation. So I'm going to save this file out also um, so that you can uh, take the squeeze bottle and you can uh, work with him a bit with the rigging, the skinning, um, getting involved in a constraint, which is good. Uh, if this is confusing, it's okay. Just remember, you select the master first and then the slave, so it'd be object, control, select, squeeze, and then go into constraints and do the parent constraint. And if your parent constraint's not working, it's acting weird, make sure maintain offset is turned on. Um, that's saying that, you know, the squeeze bone is in an offset position. Let me go show joints, bring it back. But the squeeze is not in the exact same location as the object. And so that's saying, that's fine, keep it offset, and then let the squeeze bone follow along with whatever the object's doing. If you turn that off, the squeeze bone is going to get placed exactly where the object bone is, and you don't want that. So we'll get into this more in the future classes, but it's important to start to understand um, a bit more about skinning and, and building up a, a rigging, a bone structure to accommodate whatever it is you're trying to animate. And then you can do constraints on top to um, help clean up any issues you're having with your bone structure or to add additional animation functionality, which is um, exactly how those the character rig on the robot is. Also, the robot file is up. It's called like Acme Basic Rig. It's not under this week, it's under previous week. But all these files will be placed up also. Um, watch this. Um, in the future, I'm going to be putting the videos up a week before lecture, so you follow through with the project files um, and then, you know, do these uh, uh, exercises in your own project. For example, this week it will be like take three objects and animate them, rig and animate them. And so you should be following along with my video series before class and then when I go into class, um, is when we'll troubleshoot, you know, you've actually done it, so you have some more questions and, and get more involved in the discussion, and we can hit on more advanced topics and hopefully um, get the class um, learning a bit more. Thank you.